consider uh, an example here uh, that's not quite as easy and as straightforward. So once again, we're dealing with something minus x squared. So in other words, we're in the format a minus x squared. So again, when we're dealing with that, we use the substitution x equals a sine theta. So in this picture here, we see that a, 16, is 4 squared. So x is 4 sine theta. Uh, and so dx would be the derivative, which would be 4 cosine theta d theta. So let's go ahead and make that adjustment here. And again, what this will eventually transform into, because of that Pythagorean relationship, eventually we're going to be bringing a cosine into this problem. So making these changes, uh, we'll have on top uh, 4 cosine theta d theta inside of our integral. And then we're going to have 16 minus x squared. x is 4 sine of theta, so that'll be 16 minus 16 sine squared theta. All that raised to the 3 halves. We can factor the 16 out. So 4 cosine theta d theta on top. On the bottom, we're going to have 16 times 1 minus sine squared. Again, that's all to the 3 halves. <coughs> so a few things first. Um, remember when you raise something to a fractional power like 3 halves, you've got two choices. Uh, we can either... Uh, raise it to the third power, then do the square root, or we can take the square root and then raise it to the third power. So in this case with the 16, uh, 16 squared of 16 is 4, 4 to the third would be 64. So what I'm going to have here is 4 over 64 integral of cosine theta d theta on top, and then I'm going to have cosine squared theta to the 3 halves. So of course what's going to happen again here, cosine we treat as positive, so, uh, so square root of cosine is just going to be cosine, now we're going to have cosine to the third, I got 4 over 64 on the outside. All right, so that's going to simplify to be 1 16th integral of cosine d theta over, and then here we're going to have square root of cosine squared will be cosine, and then cubed. So 1 16th integral 1 over cosine squared. But remember that 1 over cosine squared is just secant squared. But remember the integral of secant squared is just tangent. Okay, but that answer is in terms of theta, and we need to convert it back over to x. So we've done the first kind of, if you will, two-thirds of the problem. All right, first step is the trick substitution. So the converting over, converting over to uh, a trick function, angles of the, in terms of the angle theta. So that's what we did here. Then we did some simplifying, right, and we eventually work out the integral. Okay, so I've got to finish the two parts. All right, we did our initial step, and then we did our simplifying and evaluating the integral. The final step is to now take the answer and express it back in terms of x. So here's what we know. Uh, we need to evaluate tangent theta 
we know that x is 4 sine theta. Now I could say what theta is. Right? I could solve for theta. Right? It's x over 4 and then apply the inverse sine. Theta is the inverse sine of x over 4. Uh, okay. But it's better if I just look at it this way and say x over 4 is equal to sine theta. So, or sorry, x is equal to 4 sine theta. So we know that x over 4 is equal to sine theta. So we can use that to draw a picture. So we draw an angle. Now that angle could go into either the first or fourth quadrants, because inverse sine is tied to either the first or fourth quadrants. All right, we have to go to one of them. So put our angle in here, either the first or fourth quadrant. So I'm just going to go into first, draw my reference triangle, draw my angle theta, and we know that sine of theta, which is opposite over hypotenuse, is x over 4. So here I can go in and write x over 4. We can then use our Pythagorean theorem. We can then use our Pythagorean theorem <coughs> to complete the third side. So the third side, of course, is going to be that square root of 16 minus x squared. Hypotenuse squared minus x squared. Square root of 16 minus x squared. All right, and now we can go... Now that we have the picture set up, we can actually compute whatever trig function we have here. Now, if it was just a theta, like it was in the earlier example, then we would just apply the inverse side and we're done. But since it's a trig function applied to theta, all right, we have to go back and work that out. In this case, uh, tangent would be opposite which is x over the adjacent square root of 16 minus x squared. Okay. Plus a constant, and then just clean that up just a tiny little bit. All right, not bringing that 16 into the bottom there with the square root. So I get uh, not 1, but x over 16 square root. 16 minus x squared right, plus a constant. Okay. And so if you take and differentiate that thing, uh, you should of course get back, uh, we would hope, our original function. Our original function, if we were to do the derivative of this stuff, we should get back to this stuff. So that would be our hope if everything's been uh, worked out right and properly. The derivative of this should give us that. Okay. So this is kind of the process. Uh, and you can see that the result is actually an algebraic function. Uh, we're just using these trick functions as an intermediary to put the integral into a format of something we can actually work out. Okay. And then we're using our definition that we started with to now go back once we have an answer in terms of some trig function and we compute that to get back to our algebraic function. And okay. so that's how these trig substitutions generally work out.